announcement before we begin worship. So if Nancy is ready and Jen, uh, we're going to relaunch the Wall of Blessing. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to say kudos and God bless this congregation for raising over $9,400 with the Wall of Fame. Yes, big round of applause. And that was in last year in the middle of a pandemic. Do you think we could do the same this year? Yes. <laughs> Shall we try? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so our wall of blessing has em envelopes pinned to the, the wall back there, numbered from one to 200. Now all the numbers are not there. So what you're going to do, maybe Jen will demonstrate. She'll be Vanna, or I'll be Vanna while she demonstrates. So we're gonna be very um, obliging as to how this process gets done. We just really want to encourage as many envelopes being used. So if the envelope is not on there that you want, you have a specific number, you can pick a blank envelope, put your name and number, and then we encourage you to put it in the offering plate. Or if you're not here, um, if you're doing uh, e-transfer, e you can put on the message for Ruth, Wall of Blessing, and that'll be applied, and Ruth will track it so that we'll know if we, you know, what, how we're tr going along with the envelopes. Um, we're here, and we're accessible on Facebook or calling us if you want us to pick up any money, if you want any, have any questions, if you want um, help with any of the process to get an envelope in. We'll be more than happy to do what we can help with that and we've decided not to use the yellow box number one we can't find the key anyway the best thing i think for everybody would be to just put it in the collection so uh i'm going to do the first donation if i can find my own envelope. <laughs> oh here it is okay so here's my envelope it has name address and my name address and my envelope number so i'm just going to put my envelope number and probably my name rather than the address and everything so so envelope number and my name so i'll put it there and i have an announcement or a little blurb yes. about it in the bulletin for this coming sunday uh, for everyone okay so also I talked about my bottle of dimes last year. Well, it's taken me a year, probably two years before that, and I've still got about that much to my bottle of dimes. So when that gets full, I'll wrap it, Ruth, and take it to the bank. <laughs> but if you can think of some ideas like that, like maybe saving your loose change, your quarters, your whatever, then uh, that's a good way to donate as well. Okay, let's see how we make out. Good morning. Good morning and welcome as we gather on this beautiful winter's morning. It's so glorious to see the sun shining as we give God thanks for his gift of creation. And uh, we are entering the season of Lent. This is the first Sunday of Lent as we make our 40-day journey with Jesus through the wilderness. We're going to begin our worship with listening to two verses of the hymn 628, O oh Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High. Scripture says, we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 
And as we gather for worship, we ask for God's mercy, protection, and guidance in this year, 2021. So let us pray. Gracious God, thank you that you are over all, in all, and through all. We lift our world before you as we face the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for those who are suffering its effects, the medical personnel who are caring for them, and those who are seeking a vaccine or cure. And we pray for the success of the vaccines in Canada and other parts of the world. We are grateful for the lives of people who have died and pray for their families and friends in their bereavement. We ask that you enable us to know your love for all and give us your peace, which passes all understanding. In the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the penitential rite, beginning on the bottom of page 45 of the Book of Alternative Services. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And so let us confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The response that we are using before and after the invitatory will be number eight. It's printed in your bulletin, and it's also on page 48, the sentence for Lent. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. We say the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand, Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. I invite Janice to come now for the scripture reading. A reading from Genesis, God's covenant with Noah. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I'll remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. 
and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in, in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 25, Book of Alternative Services, page 733, verses 1 to 9. Read responsibly by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. We pray together. God of compassion and love, forgive our sins, relieve our misery, satisfy our longing, and fulfill all our hopes for peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter, suffering for doing right. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please turn to our parish mission statement, which is printed in your bulletin. Let us say our mission statement together. We are a worshiping Anglican community, nourished by liturgy, scripture, sacraments, prayer, and fellowship. We are guided by the Holy Spirit to care for God's creation, so that all may know the peace of Christ and the power of his resurrection. And if you are able, I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism and temptation of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the River Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee 
proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. O oh God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to obey it with courage, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, the title of today's <laughs> message is Start Building an Ark. How many people here have ever built something with your own hands? A lot of you have. <laughs> you know, it could be something as simple as a tower with Lego blocks, or maybe a little more complicated, like a boat, or perhaps even a house. Whoever has built something might have an idea of what Noah went through in building an ark. Sooner or later in life, every one of us comes to a Noah-like situation. We may find ourselves in difficult circumstances, surrounded perhaps by difficult people. During this COVID-19 pandemic, we have heard the message time and again to stay home and stay safe. Well, the sad reality is that for many people, staying home means the opposite of staying safe. I was shocked to hear on the news of an increase in the number of babies with severe trauma injuries brought into emergency rooms since the pandemic started. That's heartbreaking. The world around us has tuned God out, has turned away from God, and seems bent on going to hell when we hear about things like that. When we find ourselves in such a situation, we have to make a Noah-like decision. We look at the problem and we wonder, what can I possibly do? And we think, well, I don't want my family to be lost. I don't want to lose my own soul. Let me ask, have we learned to listen to God? Have we learned to listen to his Holy Spirit? If we learn to listen, we may hear a prompting from God's Holy Spirit. And a thought comes into our mind that says, start building an ark. Well, that's the thought that came to Noah's mind. It may not be exactly what will come to our minds, but a challenge may come to us from God that prompting or inner voice as one came to Noah that day. God says, you don't have to live like the world. And then we face the question, well, how much do we really want to be saved? Water plays a significant role in being saved. The water of Christian baptism refers back to this Noah story. Have you ever thought about that? when eight people in the world were saved by the very water that destroyed the others, all the evil ones who had turned their backs on God. And so we come to the waters of baptism with the assurance that God claims us as his own. That is the essence of salvation. We cannot earn it. Rather, we accept it as a gift. God loves us and desires a relationship with us. And that's why he gave us free will. We're born into this world to make choices of our own. And we are living under God's grace. And that word spells G-R-A-C-E. We can think of it as standing for God's righteousness at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. 
God's righteousness at Christ's expense. So we're clothed in the righteousness that Jesus has given us because of his death and resurrection. And so we can stand right before God because of what Jesus has already done for us. We don't earn our way to heaven. But as Christians, as believers, as baptized members of the body of Christ, we strive to live our lives following the teachings of Jesus. And the Bible teaches that to believe is more than just to acknowledge Jesus in our heads. To believe is to hear God make a promise and to respond to that promise in our hearts and to live it out in our lives. Over this past year, we have heard of so many tragic events, you know, including the Nova Scotia mass shooting, racial and hate crimes, and the many COVID-19 related deaths, and so many other things. It's been a very difficult year. We can turn to scripture to see how God brings life out of death. In the Noah's story, God promised to never destroy the world again by flood. God claimed, God called that promise a covenant, a covenant. Nearly 2,000 times throughout the scriptures, we read about the covenant. So it's pretty important, isn't it? And we live by promises. God has promised that whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but will have eternal life. That's just one of the many promises that God has made in scripture. God has promised that if we confess our sins, he will do what? He will forgive them, right? If we confess them, he will forgive them. God has promised that if we ask, the Father will send us his Holy Spirit. And does God keep his promises? Yes, he does. He keeps every one of them. We might break some of ours, but God keeps all of his. And our salvation depends on the promises that God has given us and whether we accept them. You see, that's where free will comes in. It's up to us to accept them. God's love does not depend on whether we are good or bad. God loves us even when we deserve nothing. Being saved is more than a one-time event. Being saved is a promise honored. Just as a good marriage is more than a beautiful wedding, but is built on a covenant and mutual trust so that the relationship continues. And so our relationship with God is an ongoing promise, a covenant. And we know that God keeps his side of the covenant and it's up to us whether or not we keep our side of the covenant. And we can only keep our side of the covenant if we are living differently from the world around us. And so do we hear God's still small voice saying, get busy, start building an ark. Remember the L in bells that stands for listening? As missionary people, we are to develop those habits that help us to continue God's work in the world. So one of the habits is to develop the habit of listening to God, to his Holy Spirit, who gives us correction, guidance, promptings, you know, direction in life. And Lent, as we're into the season of Lent now, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to seek to honor God's covenant and to begin to develop that habit of listening to his Holy Spirit or continue on that journey of developing the habit of listening to God through his Holy Spirit. 
Jesus began his public ministry proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. Wherever Jesus is, there is God's kingdom. And Jesus also said, repent. In other words, change the way you live. Build an ark. Listen to God. Be saved. And being saved means being different from the world. It means being free from the bondage of sin and being free to live as children of God. And there's responsibility that comes with that, isn't there? Being saved means being in a covenant relationship with our loving Savior. It means loving our neighbor, treating one another with compassion. It means controlling our tongue and speaking words that build up rather than tear down. As we begin our Lenten journey, today's scripture challenges us to take some time to develop the habit of listening to God's voice, just as Noah did. He knew he had to build an ark. Maybe we don't have to build an ark, but God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. So how much do we want to listen? Now, God may not tell us to build an ark, but he's telling us something. We have a purpose to get out of bed in the morning. And what is that purpose? God has a different plan for each one of us because we're all unique. We're all specially gifted in different ways. And if we want to know God's plan, it would be good to develop the habit of listening. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, during this season of Lent, as we reflect upon the promise you have made to save all who call upon your name, help us to remember that we are your covenant people. By your Holy Spirit, teach us to listen. Empower us to repent of our sins and to live the full life you have won for us as children of God, that we may at last share in the glory and worship of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to turn to the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 52. And if you are able, please stand as we confess our faith. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the prayer over the gifts, including the offering on the side table, as well as envelopes sent to our parish office, and e-transfer, e-offering, and online through our parish website. 
God blesses all that we give in whatever manner in which it is given. God, our refuge and strength, receive all we offer you this day, and through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. I invite Janice to come forward to lead us in the prayers of the people. Litany number 14, Lent 1, page 121. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit and ask that you give faithfulness, wisdom, and understanding to all who minister, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we remember the Church of the Province of Central Africa, Archbishop Linda Nichols, Anglican Church of Canada, Diocese of Montreal, Bishop Mary Irwin Gibson, our Companion Diocese of Ho and Bishop Matthias, Diocese of Yukon, Bishop Leslie Wheeler Dane, Atlan St. Martin, the Reverend Vera Kirkwood, the Reverend Dorothy and her husband Dennis Odeon, the Reverend George and his wife Marilyn Holman, licensed lay minister Sherry Malo, David our Archbishop, Claude William and George retired bishops and their families. For the faithful gathered here, and for every congregation, for the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church throughout the world. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, whose word is living and active, give your people grace in their busy lives to read, hear, and receive your word and the ability to listen and respond to your Holy Spirit. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of promise and deliverance, just as Jesus replied upon your word in responding to temptations in the wilderness, help us to turn to Holy Scripture for guidance in life as we grow in our faith. For those preparing for baptism and confirmation, and for their parents, teachers, and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, lover of peace and concord, guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. We pray for the victims of violence and tragedies, for their families and communities as they grieve and try to put the pieces of their lives back together. That the spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, help and comfort the lonely, the oppressed, and the bereaved. Holy Spirit, by your power, heal the sick in body and mind, especially those we know and love who are on our prayer list and others who are known to us. We pause to name them before you either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of love and forgiveness, during this season of Lent, as we reflect on our lives, our relationships, and our failure to truly love our neighbor, grant us a spirit of true repentance. We pray for all whom we have injured or offended, that there may be healing and reconciliation. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy on us as we pray to grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Grant these prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. The Collect of today is printed on the bottom of page 3. Let us pray together. 
Almighty God, whose Son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are but did not sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your Spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And please turn to our parish vision statement on page 4. And let us say our vision statement together. We will become a more caring community of believers who learn together, nurture and support each other, and reach out to the community at large with the love of Christ. And may the Lord Jesus, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forevermore. May the Lord Jesus, who serves with wounded hands, help you serve others. May the Lord Jesus, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you to the end of the road. Look for the face of the Lord Jesus in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge those who are celebrating this week. Uh, and so happy birthday to the Reverend Deacon Christine Greer. And happy birthday to Caroline Stockford. And happy birthday to Norm Brown. And to anyone else who may be celebrating a birthday. And also happy anniversary to anyone who may be celebrating an anniversary at this time of year. We pray God's blessing upon you and upon your family as you celebrate and we pray for continued health and strength in the days ahead. Thank you. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.